Welcome back to Guna Fanzine TV. We're talking after um, Arsenal's dramatic 3-2 victory against uh, Vittoria in the Europa League. We've got Dan the Man Mountney, who's, um, who's just come from the press box. Um, you've put out your player ratings tonight. Yeah. Really, really strange result in terms of the performance. Obviously, Pepe's two late goals saved the night for Emery. Yeah. But what were your player ratings like? Talk us through them. Well, I mean, starting from the back, I mean, Emi Martinez, a game of six and a half, I thought he probably could have done better with that first goal that went through his legs, probably should have stayed on his feet. Um, but he did make a couple of really important saves. I think one before the first goal at the near post. Yeah, uh, that was it, that was a good save. And then he made one in the second half as always, diving at the feet of the strike. I think Davidson was the centre forward. Yeah, um, yeah, a couple of important saves. Maybe should have done better with that first goal. So six and a half in middle of the road. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, he, I think he's played better this season in terms of oh, cup yeah, games, definitely. as you, you, you say yourself. Um, I'd go five and a half potentially. But yeah, it's so, solid performance. Yeah, Arsenal got the, res, the result in the end, but um, yeah. he can play better. Yeah. Uh, and then right back Hector Bellerin uh, gave him a five okay. a bit, look, still looks a bit rusty for me he, tr- he did try to get forward down that right hand side um, but still that final ball is maybe lacking obviously when you've had an injury like he's had it takes a while for you to get your touch and your technical ability back yeah. um, but I said this before I think that the most important thing is you can still see he's got that pace which is you know yeah. his real asset yeah. so yeah Average, average evening for him. Game of five. Okay, I think he grew into the game in the second half. Mm-hmm. He, he, he potentially um, he, he, he pushed on a bit more. Um, I, I thought he looked more impressive as the game went on. Five, slightly harsh for me. Maybe I'd give him a six, but then I really like Hector Bellerin. So, um, yeah. but the main thing is for Arsenal fans, he's coming back and he's, he's getting minutes mm-hmm. in his legs every game, now, isn't he? So, yeah. Uh, the centre halves, so I gave them both a four: Squadron Mustafi and Rob Holding. I think they both were left a bit exposed for both goals but I think especially for the second one one of them should have been a bit more proactive in terms of stepping out and going for the ball they both backed off there was a huge space between them hence why the first shot happened that led to the goal yeah. um, I think maybe reflecting on it now I was probably a bit harsh on Mustafi I think he played okay he had a couple of chances where he should have scored really yeah. shouldn't he yeah. Um, but yeah it wasn't a great great evening for either of them so four yeah. okay well, I was, I'd say that's slightly harsh because I thought Mustafi had a quite a good game for Mustafi I'm not his biggest fan by mm-hmm. by any stretch of the imagination and he, as, as we were talking about it before he's kept well, he's been part of the defence that's had yeah. three clean sheets in cup ties this season so um, I think he can be he can lose a mark or two for that late header which yeah, which flew over the bar when yeah. um, when he should have scored shouldn't yeah, he really so um, yeah. I'd probably given him a five so you give him a four didn't you yeah. Rob Holding um, I really like Rob Holding but yes, I think you're right yeah, of course, he yeah. didn't play that well tonight did he really no, he's and still he, as with Bellerin he looks rusty yeah yeah exactly so. I, again I'd probably given him a five but, but four Four or five, six, they're all, you know, sort of run of the mill marks for, for a defence that conceded two goals and yeah, could have lost course, the game, yeah. basically. So I think I think that's probably fair enough, really. Yeah, as for Tierney, he would have got a seven had it not been for the mistake for the first goal. We got six and a half in the end. Um, I think that first goal, he was out of position, wasn't he? He didn't get back in time. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I think he played really well going forward. He set up the first goal with a really good cross from Martinelli. Uh, he linked well with Emil Smith Rowe yeah. down the left hand side in the second half. He looks really good going forward, and that's something that Arsenal have lacked in that position for a while. Obviously, Klasen actually knows delivery is not the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think with Tierney in the past, the past few games he's played, we've not really seen him tested defensively, and he was tonight. And yeah, he struggled a little bit, but you know, as as with the others, he's still coming back from a long injury, so give him time. Yeah, I thought he had a decent performance, so six and a half. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that, really. I think, he, as you say, he looks really good going forward. He needs to um, potentially just, just gel with, with the, the Arsenal back line, and that will come in time. Yeah. He didn't have the best game defensively, I think you're right. But yeah, going forward, he looked really, really good. Mm-hmm. And he whips the ball in as well, doesn't he? And he, he does yeah. dovetail well with further attackers further yeah, forward, definitely. such as Martinelli and obviously Smith Rowe, as you said. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair enough. Yeah. OK, Lucas Terra, I gave a five and a half. And I probably gave him a five and a half not through himself if that makes sense so I think he was left exposed a lot of the game especially in that first half Willock was pushing on he was having to sit there and do the defensive work in midfield on his own yeah. and in the second half he was been playing as a number 10 which is just ridiculous I think we can all agree on that yeah. considering he's the club's best defensive midfielder so yeah he got five and a half through no fault of his own really um, you can never fault his effort he always gives 100% you know he really battles gets stuck in Yeah. so yeah okay performance I think his teammates and their tactics didn't help him, so hence the five and a half. Yeah, I think you're right. He, he, he wasn't not given any favours by um, Emery pushing mm. him in that sort of more attacking role because yeah. he's not an attacking midfielder. He's not even an attacking defensive midfielder if you want to talk about sort of Kante being played in that yeah. role because Kante didn't play that well last season. No. And um, you can see he's lost confidence. He's not the player he was last year, Torreira. Yeah. And um, it's down to Emery as far as I can see. You know, he's obviously had a long summer, a ter- long season in terms of Copa America mm-hmm. and he's still gradually finding his feet but yeah. 
that's not the Torreira we know from last season, really. And that's a lot to do with Emery, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I would probably give him a four, four and a half tonight. I didn't think he played Fair that enough. well at all. But um, yeah. as you say, it's not really Torreira's fault yeah. because that's not his position. So mm. why has he been playing that position? I mean, you've so, really got to feel frustrated for him, haven't you? He had a really good season last season, kind yeah. of tailed off towards the end, but he was one of Arsenal's better performers throughout yeah. the season. He really showed that he can offer something to the team that no one else does. He, you know, it's his first season in England. He adapted well. He's obviously still learning the language. We know that we spoke to him towards the back end of last season, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. Before the Europa League final. Um, so yeah, you've got to look at it and think why is why has he been dropped? Obviously, he had the Copper America in the summer, so maybe he's still trying to, you know, give him a rest and get back to fitness. Yeah. But he's Arsenal's best defensive midfielder, and he should be playing week in, week out. Exactly. I mean, you look at people like Granite Jacker, and he's not performing, so yeah. it's a bit harsh on him not to play. Absolutely. Let's not go with Granite Jacker tonight. Let's no, not talk about him. Of course not. But um, yeah, I completely agree for what it's worth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then further forward, Joe Willock, another poor performance from him. Subbed off at half time for the second game in a row. Yeah. And I mean, he didn't really offer anything going forward. He looks to really have lost confidence, doesn't he? Um, and I think I put my player ratings that he should be taken out of the firing line. Okay. What, um, what did you give him again? I gave him a four. A four. Yeah, he didn't play well at all. No. And like you say, it's the second time he's been taken off at half time. Mm-hmm. Why has he lost confidence? Why is he not the player he was at the end of last season, uh, even at the start of this yeah. season? Well, I think there's been a lot of pressure put on him. Um, you know, we obviously started the first two Premier League games, played yeah. really well. He's played well in the cup competitions, especially in the Europa League. Yeah. Scored a couple of goals and there's probably like weight of expectation on him now. You've got to remember he's still only, what, 20, 21? Yeah, yeah. So he's still got a lot, lot to learn. It's his kind of first, you argue, his first full season in first team football. He's obviously been in and around the first team for the past few years. But this is the first time he's really been thrown in and had that responsibility. And I think he probably just needs to be taken out of the team for a while. Just, you know, learn from the experience have the senior players around him and help him to learn from it and yeah, just give him some time to maybe relax and rest and just reevaluate the situation. Do you, do you think in terms of Emery that he's suffered slightly from the fact that Emery still doesn't know his most settled team, he's playing them in, in a position where you do need a bit of experience and then taking him off at half time, which is going to make you lose confidence yeah. as well? Well, I think, again, you've got to look at the tactics. He, he played him in a deeper role as the holding midfielder alongside Torreira, yeah. that's probably not his best position. You yeah. want him pushed a little bit further on, not too far up the pitch, because his best quality is when he's got the ball at his feet and he's driving at players. Yeah. We've seen that in the past. So, again, you've got to look at it and think, is he using him to his best abilities? No. Yeah, so. yeah. and hence the result of a, of a four against yeah. a, a, a not particularly good Portuguese side, even though they were mm. on, the, on the verge of winning at one <laughs> stage tonight. But, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, I think I agree with that. Uh, and next is Ainsley Maitland-Niles, who was by far and away the worst player on the pitch tonight for me. I thought he was absolutely terrible. He's been given two chances to play in a position that he prefers in midfield further forward and he's really been poor in both, especially tonight. Uh, it was his error for the second goal. He was the one who gave the ball away deep in his own half. Yeah, yeah, just shocking performance really. And you've got to look at his positioning for a lot of the game as well. He wants to play further forward but yet you see him dropping deep and getting the ball on the halfway line. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe a case of it is that he's trying too hard to impress in that position, hence the poor performances. He's really got to step up when he's given that chance. Absolutely. I think he's, he's obviously been, been labelled as a versatile player now, a utility player. And I think he is confused sometimes in his head yeah. as to whether how far to go forward, how far mm-hmm. to, to drop back. Certainly in the position of right midfield or, or right wing back. And um, yeah, he didn't, he didn't excel yeah. at all tonight. And um, I think he just needs a rest, doesn't yeah, he? He needs a break from the first yeah, he's team. He's definitely a vic- the victim of his own versatility, isn't he? He's, yeah. He doesn't know his best position. Yeah. I don't think Embry knows his best position. I don't think we know his best position, really. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, spell out the side. Maybe you go back to the under-23s, have a, have a few games there and um, get your confidence and come back again, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, this is probably where it gets a little bit better. Uh, Emil Smith-Rowe, I thought he had a good game tonight. Yep. I'm a massive fan of his. Um, he played kind of more central in the first half. Did some, did some nice things. That turn inside the box to create that chance that the defender just took away with him was really nice. Yep. Shows his best qualities in terms of when he's going forward. Uh, Improved in the second half for me. He moved out to the left-hand side. Him and Tierney played really well together, linked up nicely. I probably should have done better with that finish uh, early in the second half. But yeah, decent performance of him coming back from injury. Um, yeah, good to see him play well. Yeah, and absolutely. I gave him a seven and a half. Seven and a half, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Smith Rowe as well. We obviously covered his um, exploits in the Youth Cup a couple yeah. of years ago. I remember going up to Bishop Auckland to uh, to watch the Arsenal under 18s play against Middlesbrough mm-hmm. in uh, in Deep County Durham. And um, yeah, he played really well that night and he obviously kicked on. And we saw him at Colchester in that 5 1 in the quarter final. Yeah. And he yeah, did really he well. Scored, he scored a superb goal, didn't even that free mm-hmm. kick. Um, I think he got a couple of goals that night. Yeah, so two, we're, yeah. we're big fans of him. We want him to do well. Yeah. I love the fact he drives on. He's always yeah. such a positive. 
positive player, isn't mm. he? Even if he plays his back to cover, he's always looking to turn and, mm. and, and try and drive at the defence or play the ball out wide. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I think I think a central role could potentially be his almost favourite position. I, I think he could do well there, but yeah. yeah, obviously he still needs a bit more experience and he's coming back from a serious head injury as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think it's a big season for him as well because he missed, he, obviously, before he went on loan to Leipzig, he yeah. was played really well in the Europa League. Yeah. I think he scored three or four goals. Yeah. Really kind of stood out. Uh, and then he went on loan, he had a bit of a groin problem, didn't really play much, and that maybe hampered his development. He's still quite young, I think he's only 19, yeah. but you've got to think this season's going to be massive for him in terms of getting minutes, uh, impressing Emre. We've seen that Emre will give chances to younger players, but yeah. Kaya is a perfect example. Absolutely. So, yeah, massive season for him. Yeah, yeah, and, and let's look forward to it, basically. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, and then another youngster to impress, Gabriel Martinelli. I gave him a seven. Um, okay. Obviously got that first goal, really good performance again. He's lively, drives at play as much like Smith Rowe does, yeah. and you can see he really wants to impress. And he's adapted really well. I think he didn't. I didn't give him that extra half that Smith Rowe got purely because I think he faded he towards the end of the game. Yeah. Um, that's probably saying something, something to do with you know he's still quite young. He's still trying to get that fitness. He's not played that much this season. Um, but yeah, another good promising performance from him yeah absolutely he's got the technique he's got the talent he's got the temperament he's got the attitude yeah. I think there's so much more to come from him and I think you're right he did. He started really well he obviously yeah. got the goal he did fade a little bit but he'll learn from that experience and certainly kick on and um, he can look to maybe um, hopefully start against Liverpool in the League Cup for, for next week potentially yeah but, big um, stage for him that isn't it yeah absolutely so yeah a lot more come from Martelli but yeah I think he played well tonight yeah. you're right uh, and then uh, Alexandre Lacazette obviously returned from injury looked a little bit rusty touch maybe wasn't there didn't really get that many clear-cut chances. Uh, I think he had one in the first half that he dragged wide. But yeah, it's just good to see him back, isn't it? Obviously, he's still trying to get that match fitness. Yeah. But yeah, I gave him a five. Um, you know, I could have done better tonight, but you can excuse him. He's coming back from injury, so <laughs> didn't really have that much service either. Yeah. So, yeah, five. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, four and a half, five, five, probably about right in terms of his um, effectiveness and um, and the way he influenced the game. Obviously, you, like you say, ten out of ten for um, for his attitude and, um, and and working hard. But yeah, he didn't influence the game as much as he yeah. wanted to really. In terms of um, the goal scorer, uh, yeah, Nicolas Pepe got a nine, yeah. and I think deserved. I mean, <laughs> Arsenal wouldn't have won the game without him. Yeah. yeah. Um, influential, and I think that's the kind of performance that we've been waiting for from him, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously two superb free kicks and he really showed why the club paid so much money for him uh, be massive for his confidence you know we've, we know he's a confidence player yeah. um, Unai Emery said that he's improving I think that's clear we've seen in the past two games you know he obviously missed that sitter against Sheffield United but he was probably one of Arsenal's better players yeah. on that night absolutely amazing tonight changed the game you know, really showed what he can do. So yeah, nine man of the match for me. Yeah, I mean, you make a good point about Sheffield United. He, he had really quick feet. There was one move where he sort yeah. of nutmegged the player and pushed on. Mm -hmm. um, he showed great feet again tonight. Great technique for yeah. for both goals. But he also showed character and be able to take both goals as well from 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 difficult places basically difficult positions yeah. in terms of um, being outside the box so yeah I, I think that's about right he certainly saved um, Emery's bacon tonight didn't yeah, he really so, yeah. uh, and also gave Gwendouzi a six and a half I thought he was good when he came off the bench yeah. he's been Arsenal bar Bamiang he's been Arsenal's best player so far this season and he looks like someone who's really matured and has grown as a player and as a person he, like, he drives forward he gives something that other midfielders don't and he you know, he has that heart and that passion. He's always battling, which is something that I think any fan can appreciate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love the way he drove on. He was mm -hmm. fouled on the edge of the box, wasn't yeah. he? For, I think he won the free kick. He didn't won the free he? kick. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, yeah, just another good performance from yeah. Guendouzi and um, a lot more to come as well. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think we can be really, really happy with the result. Happy <laughs> with a lot of performances, but not happy with the over overall team display which comes from the manager, potentially. Yeah. We don't want to slag him off after a win, but at the same time, if Arsenal had lost 2-1, there would have been a lot more dissenting mm -hmm. voices again tonight, wouldn't there? Yeah. So it's, it's a really difficult situation because, um, yeah, Emery is obviously trying to get this team right, but at the same time, it's a B team out there, and then the B team has been playing well this season in terms of cup games. They didn't play well tonight, but they got out of jail, didn't they, through Pepe? Yeah. So um, what, do we, how do we, what do we make of that, really? If you were going to give Emery a mark out of 10, what would you give him Three. tonight? Three, really? Yeah, I mean... Tactically, got it all wrong in terms of players playing in, in the wrong positions. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of the intensity, the tempo. You mentioned there that he doesn't know his best team. He's had he's had a season and a bit of the club now. Yeah. Obviously, there's been a lot of changes in terms of the squad, but there's been players that he's brought in that he clearly wants, so surely he should know what his best team is. He's got a fully fit squad bar Reese Nelson. Yeah. So, by now, you should know your best team. I mean, you can you can speak to me about this. Obviously, Arsene Wenger, when he first came in, he won the title in his second season, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, and there was progress all through from his first game, literally. Yeah, so. and I think, if you look at that, he definitely knew his best team. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't, he didn't really... 
he inherited a lot of the players, didn't he? Yeah. Obviously, he brought in people like Vieira, Petit, Overmars, but he inherited most of that team. And yeah. you've got to look at Emre and think, do you know who who you want to play and where you want to play them and how you want to play? Yeah, yeah. There's big well, question marks. Absolutely. There are massive question marks, aren't there? What was a bit disappointing for me in terms of the overall performance was the fact that in the Cup games so far this season, they have seen to progress, yeah. which has run counter to most league games. But tonight, they stalled and they almost regressed, really, mm-hmm. in terms of the performance. But... They've got the win, three points out of uh, three wins out of three, nine points out of nine. They're through, but they yeah. we need to see progress, don't we? And there yeah. was there wasn't progress again tonight, was there? No, really? I think the only thing with the cup team you can say is you can probably give them a bit of leeway because there's a lot of young players in there. Yeah, and there's been a lot of players returning to fitness and trying to get that sharpness back. So you probably can forgive them for not having that same intensity and tempo. Yeah. But it was exactly the same as we've seen in the Premier League, and something has to change because it can't continue like that because Arsenal are going to struggle. Yeah. Yeah. You've got you look at teams around like Tottenham, Manchester United. They're struggling, and you could say that Arsenal are only where they are in the league. Obviously, fifth, couple of points off the top four. They're only there because the teams around them have not performed, yeah. and they've got lucky in games. You look at Aston Villa. Yeah, I mean, they they yeah. should yeah they won three two. They Aston Villa should have a penalty right at the end when yeah. Socrates handled the ball in the box. I mean, it was clear. You look at Bournemouth. Bournemouth were by far the better team. Arsenal somehow won the game. Yeah. You look at games tonight. They weren't weren't at their best. Victoria were the better side. Yeah. And they won the game. It's a lot of a lot of things going their way at the moment, and they're maybe riding their luck. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me a little bit of the, some games in the twenty-two unbeaten run last season. Mm-hmm. Although it did seem like there was a gradual progression there. Yeah. Still no progression tonight, really, was there? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching. Um, what do you make of Arsenal under uh, Emery at the moment? Let us know because we've had our say. Like, comment, share. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>